So that's what happens when you do too many girl push-ups. So I actually sat down to start the show, according to Mulaney, as I've reached the end of my life. I am no athlete, right? Like, my muscle enzymes are nowhere near uh, off the chart. Now I'm debating whether or not I need to call myself an Uber just to get over Northern State Parkway. Slow this down. Like, you, you're coming from a dead stop. And it feels like if I put it out, like, Chevelle would call immediately and be like, Hey, man, thanks for the new song. I don't know what you know about airplanes, but pilots, super important. This is just me personally. I don't think I would get in an airplane uh, that did not have a pilot. He had five, five, four, three, pick number three, my lord. Sorry, getting very Kyle Kinane distracted. Yeah, just really not something I need to deal with right now. It's not super important. It's just what I was doing. That's super good news for me. Probably doesn't mean anything to you. Hard Rock Lunch Box. Uh, greetings and salutations, members of the Hard Rock Log Lunchbox and viewers of the Top 20. How's everybody doing today? I'm sorry I'm running super late. Nobody's fault but my own. Nobody's fault but mine. If I could just quote Zeppelin for a huge second. Uh, just moving really slow uh, and wasn't really paying attention to the time. And uh, that's completely, completely on me. I have been having... Uh, I don't want to say digestive issues. I'm not looking to gross anybody out right away. It feels like less of a digestive issue and more of a... feels like I swallowed like a like a large rock, maybe, like or something. It's just... You can't see. On, and it wouldn't matter anyway because you're not doctors. But, like, it just... It just it feels like... It feels like I have just something sitting... Like, you know, you know the expression, like, sitting in the pit of my stomach? Like, I feel like this is where that is. And I feel like there's something sitting in the pit of my stomach. So that's what's going on today. But it's actually just... it's uh, It caused me to not sleep well. My cold to relapse a little bit in my chest and throat, which is just so awesome. I'm so psyched about that. Um, but also, I am... Um, very, oh, so, right. So very underslept. So I actually sat down to start the show... And for the life of me, I could not remember, like, how to turn on the recorder and stuff like that. And I have my, I have my checklist, so I did all that. So I, I'm sure I'm transmitting. Um, but yeah, so I'm just moving super slow today. So I'm sorry. Uh, that's that's why I was late. Uh, let's uh, let's just start with some um, basic housekeeping. Um, the new top twenty is out today from last week. It's called Riding the Wave. Uh, it talks about my um, stupendous ability to actually do uh, girl push-ups, um, and uh, I would put them up against uh, probably not many, uh, not many girls because I'm sure they could do a better job than me. Um, <clears throat> it's also uh, worth noting to those of you keeping up with my fitness adventure that those girl push-ups, uh, in combination with some flies that I was doing on Thursday or Friday, ended up doing like a slight micro tear in my shoulder, which is just laughable and just. Sadly pathetic, but as uh, as it goes, now that I've, according to Mulaney, as I've reached the end of my life, <laughs> like that's just that's just how it goes. And it actually ended up resulting in something kind of funny because uh, sometimes I'll just walk down to the gym over by me that I belong to, and uh, I've been adding like a slight jog in there, so it's actually a little quicker now. Uh, it's about somewhere between like 22 and 24 minutes for me to get down there. So I did that, but because. Uh, and like an idiot, by the way, I hurt my shoulder. And like an idiot, I went and I just did uh, flies and uh, more presses anyway at the gym on Monday. So I really hurt it. So I was like, okay, um, dummy, let's just take a little bit of time and let that kind of heal, which is exactly what I've done. It's much better. Thank you for asking. Uh, but so on Tuesday, I was like, I can't do that. So I went down to the gym and I can't do I can't do any arm work, like none, not lats, not row, anything, because it's really like it's deep in here. So I was like, all right, I'll just do legs. And I know this. Like, I know this mentally, like, don't do legs. It's not leg day if you're walking and jogging. I mean, it is if you're an athlete, but, like, I am no athlete, right? Like, my muscle enzymes are nowhere near uh, off the chart. Um, but I ended up doing leg day, and I did some extensions. I did some presses. Uh, I did the kickbacks and curls and stuff like that, uh, all of which was fine. 
But I did, and I can't show you because it's not that kind of show. But I did what uh, what is known as the like a hip adduction, which is when you basically have your legs kind of open and you squeeze in. If you at home, if you want to feel like this muscle, if you go to like the, if you're sitting and you go to the direct inside of your thigh, there's a muscle there. If you don't have a muscle there, you need to do more uh, hip adduction. But so I had done that, and I did a lightweight. Like, not my even normal, like, you know, 200 plus pounds. I did a lighter weight than what my normal one was. Uh, and everything was fine. Just, you know, I did my regular sets, my, my 15, 12, 8. And then um, I left. And like I said, it's about 22, 24 minutes from the gym. So I'm like walking and then I'm jogging. Basically, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm, I zigzag through the neighborhood that I have to cross till I get to Old Country. And uh, so I'll, I was just running. I was jogging on all the north-south, and I was walking on all the east-west. It's not super important. It's just what I was doing. By the time I got to my second jog, I was able to feel that, yes, indeed, I had just worked whatever muscle that was. And then I was like, oh, okay. So, okay. Now bipedal transportation is getting incredibly more difficult. And uh, there was a point where I have to cross over Norton State Parkway. I have to go over an overpass to get uh, to get back home. And I got to the bottom of this overpass and started going up the... Because it's a hill, it's an overpass. And I took a couple steps in and I was like, hmm, okay, all right. Well, I don't think I'm going to be able to make it over this thing. So now I'm debating whether or not I need to call myself an Uber just to get over Northern State Parkway. Like, hey, man, where are you going? Like, uh, right right there. That's where I'm going. Like, let me just jump on the hood of your car. You can just bring me. Here's 35 bucks. But I did not do that. I toughed it out because that's what I am and that's what I do. Not really, but that's what I did. And I got to the other side of it, and I started walking. And I, I don't know if anybody else knows this uh, feeling exactly, but I've had this throughout my life. For whatever reason, whenever, like, there's this feeling I get in the back of my knee on the, like, the, the, the outside part, uh, the, the further to the outside, the less medial part, where it feels like there's a piece of scotch tape kind of just stuck there and just flapping so that started happening, and I looked down to make sure that there wasn't, and there wasn't. There wasn't any tape on my knee whatsoever, so the feeling I was feeling, that tape uh, flapping, breaking, sticking feeling, was definitely inside. So I was like, this is what I'm going to do now. So I stopped jogging, and I just kind of just walked it the rest of the way, and I walked a little bit yesterday uh, to and from one of my appointments, and that was that was fine. So I'm back, I'm back on the mend. But um, yeah, so that's what happens when you do too many girl push-ups. And if that clip doesn't make it into the beginning of next week's show, I really, I really don't know what will. Um, all right, on my list, I have forgotten to write down that we have a show uh, August second at Nostalgia, uh, and uh, that's going to be fun. Uh, people are actually really excited about that show, which is great. Like, I'm super happy for them. Like, I have kind of mixed feelings about the show and the venue and stuff like that, but I feel like I've been pretty. I, I'm not slamming anything at all. I just, uh, you know, just as shows go, like I find it, it, it's in a different place. I will say the band is using it, and I think I said this last week or the week before. The band is using this as an opportunity to like pull some songs that they want to play out, uh, kind of out of the the closet and stuff like that, so to speak. So there's going to be kind of an eclectic mix uh, in the set. I think that's going to be fun. I think it's going to be fine, and I think we're going to have, you know, a really good time doing it. And that's. That's really all that matters as far as I'm concerned. Like I said uh, last time, we and I'll remind you next week, we're on at 10. Um, so, And I'll try and find out more about the other bands. The only other band I recognize is Share the Burden. And I cannot for the life of me remember where we played with them, but we definitely played with them. But I'm, I might be wrong about this, but I'm pretty sure they were the band that I was talking about at the time that when they got up on stage... Uh, their opening song was like, "All right, man, we're gonna slow this down." It's like slow, slow this down. Like you, you're coming from a dead stop. Like, first of all, everything should be like more than you know this. You know, you shouldn't be slowing anything down as your first song. But like, that's what they did, and it definitely slowed everything down. Because I remember, I think it was 89 North, and I remember being like, "This isn't, this is not." And, and I could be completely arrogant on my part, but I just never thought starting with a slow song is the way to go. I mean. Even when I do slow start with slow songs, they're usually at least you know 100 beats per minute or whatever, which is basically all of um, or most of Do No Harm and a lot of where my writing's at. We in the band refer to 100 beats per minute as the alley because it just seems to be where most of our songs go. So like we can kind of 
we can kind of play in that in that sandbox and kind of have the same tempo. So it's actually something as a set writer that I have to be aware of because you don't necessarily want all your songs in a row to be at the same tempo. I feel like there's a certain boredom that will befall you as a, as a human being without having some sort of variation. Now, they're all different songs, obviously, but like still... So, like, we have to be careful because we really, we f- really float between like '96 and '104, like a lot. So, I have to pull out other songs um, that are just uh, up tempo. I mean, as of right now, "Keep You Near" is our slowest song at 88 uh, beats per minute. Uh, I actually wrote a new song. I did not. I, I don't have a. I don't have all the lyrics to it because I kind of got. Is it? What do I say? Like dis. I want to say disenfranchised, but that is absolutely not the word. Dis. Um, what would be the word like if you're like uh, become disillusioned with? Maybe that's better. Like I'm becoming, I'm becoming underexcited by it. Like I like the song, and it feels like if I put it out, like Chevelle would call immediately and be like, "Hey man, thanks for the new song." But it's slower, and I was like, I don't necessarily know that I want to go slower, which is whatever. A lot of the newer songs, like Tony Omaha, are in the upper like 170s, and uh, nothing at all is actually a 200. But it's funny because even though it's a faster beat like it's a faster pace the groove on nothing at all is actually much slower because there's a it's 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 basically an audio illusion not an optical one it's an audio one <clears throat> and it just it feels slower than it actually is which is funny because tony omaha is like not our fastest song but feels like our fastest song and as i've I said have as I've said before, it's always funny to me as I write faster songs or or heavier and harder songs to sing, because then the songs previously that were faster or harder to sing, all of a sudden are like, this is so easy to sing. I go through this, I, I go through this with Steven Seagal, and I go through it with uh, Inside, because at the time that those songs were written, they were the absolute hardest songs for me to sing, both in tempo and both in like kind of grit and strength to be able to sing them. Uh, and now it's like I'll I'll bang out like inside and like I cannot believe this used to be such a problem and it was, and uh, you know I can say for sure and Jimmy if he's listening will absolutely back me up that I do not do the vocal exercises every day like I'm supposed to, so it's impressive that I'm actually still improving uh, at my incredibly advanced age, so uh, that's that's super good news for me probably doesn't mean anything to you but I was able to burn uh, about ten minutes in the top twenty so that's pretty good. <coughs> I, I'm loath to talk about like what's going on in the political world because I just like I, I definitely like I have mixed emotions about Biden dropping out of the race. I don't know what the the temperature of the room is. I haven't really talked to anybody about it. Uh, surprisingly, the only person I've really talked to about it uh, in the community here is actually Waterbury, and we were talking a little bit about how he was saying that you know he just kind of thought like Biden was more of a figurehead than anything else to which I agreed that that was probably true but it's kind of always that way right like you can't it's not like the president like that was one of the things that Trump kind of ran into like Trump wanted to run the United States like he was a CEO and you actually can't do that that's why he kept violating stuff like the Hatch Act even though apparently it just doesn't matter I mean and it is a law of the land and kept violating it anyway uh, multiple times um, but he wanted to run it like a CEO he wanted to run it like a business which honestly is not surprising, and I don't even blame him for it, right? It's his experience. He's never run any kind of municipality, so how would he know how things get done? I mean, anybody that watches, like, New York City politics, like, it's funny watching Mayor Adams, who I'm not a super fan of, just basically do battle with the um, the, the city council, which is effectively the Congress of New York, of New York City, and they just butt head constantly. And it just it's so funny because very little is getting done. In fact, like a lot of the stuff is getting done when the city council overrides, like you know, Mayor Adams' veto and stuff like that. But a municipality is difficult because if, like, for example, like Adams is trying to put in and wants to, and I think it's going ahead with putting metal detectors in at some subway uh, stations. Now they haven't even gotten the turnstile jumper problem under control yet because the NYPD the underground division just simply isn't doing their job. I mean they'll tell you that they don't have the resources to do it but I've also seen you know for myself them not doing anything right they they, the whole broken windows policy just doesn't really exist. You see it all the time too like I was I was driving and it's not just New York City but like I was driving you know you know, recently, and I had somebody blow by me. Like I was doing seventy, so they must have been doing like ninety plus. Passed a cop, 
cop didn't even do anything. Nothing. Because, like, I don't know why cops aren't pulling people over for stuff like that, but they just aren't. Or not always. And I'm not all cops, obviously. I'm not I'm not anti-police. I'm actually quite, quite pro-police. I, I would like them to have more support, but I would also like them to do their job and not, you know, this whole plan of, like, I'm just going to just do, do the bare minimum so I get home safely and 20 years get a pension. I think that's the wrong reason to be a police officer, but... That's a that's a whole different show. So I was saying uh, specifically about Mary Adams putting in the subway the the metal detectors to detect uh, weapons going into the subways, and he's getting all kinds of pushback. But he he wants to do it, and if he was CEO of New York City, it would be done already. You know what I mean? So so I understand that. So anyway, the conversation we were talking about how uh, Waterbury is like you know thinks that Biden is, is more of a figurehead, and my response or partial response or I don't even know what honestly I would call it was that you know basically most presidents at this point are, are figureheads and their most important job is to put people in office and in those positions of power that are going to do good work and do good jobs now I have been kind of disappointed with a lot of the stuff that's gone on because for all of the projects that the Biden administration has put together, and I think some of them have been grand, I think there's a bit too many of them. But I also think that there's a lot of other problems that are not being addressed properly uh, by by um, by the cabinet. And I don't, you know, mean to single out Pete Buttigieg, but he is the Secretary of Transportation, and I think what's going on with the airlines right now is absolutely reprehensible like we are not we are we're we're flying our airplanes like we're a third world country and i think it's about time the buddha judge brought the full weight and force of the federal government down on companies like boeing who don't even bother to attach all their doors anymore delta who cannot seem to get out of their own way after this crowd strike thing and they're honestly horrible to their passengers anyway i mean I just, I, they overbook, uh, they, they just, they, they're late all the time. I mean, it's just, it's unbelievable, like, all the stuff that they're doing. Uh, and Delta's even having a problem right now because uh, after the crowd strike thing, like, nobody was even communicating to the pilots. Like, I don't know what you know about airplanes, but pilots, super important to airplane travel. Like, it just, I, me, and this is just me personally, I don't think I would get in an airplane uh, that did not have a pilot. Now, that's just, that might just be me, so that's, that's something, we we each have to make our own decisions based on that, by the way. (laughs) So, um, and that's my biggest concern. It was my biggest concern with a a new, a second Trump presidency, because he's, he's got all that Project 2025 nonsense going on, and those are the people he's going to put in power, and I've said it before, and I'll just remind you for context, like, he had five, five, four, three, pick number three, my lord. He had five, one, two, three, four, five, five, five times. Um, He had five, five, (laughs) sorry, sorry, getting very Kyle Kinane distracted. He had five members of his cabinet, of which there aren't all that many, referred to the Justice Department for ethics violations, like... That's a lot. I mean, they they the Republicans in Congress tried to impeach uh, this the Secretary of uh, the Homeland Security Secretary, and I guess they kind of did. And then the Senate laughed at the House because it was just a ridiculous political stunt. Um, they were saying like he hadn't kept anybody safe and stuff. And the Senate, rightfully so, just refused to go ahead and impeach him because the main reason we're having such a border crisis right now is because the Republicans refused to vote on their own bill after Trump was like, don't allow them to fix the border during the Biden presidency. It would be bad for us. So like, I, I talked about that at length. Trump put himself and his candidacy ahead of the safety and security of the U.S. Uh, Mexico border. That's exactly what happened to the point where the dude that even wrote the bill was like, I cannot believe my own party is not backing me on this incredibly smart border control bill. But that's what happened. If you want to know why the border's in such trouble right now, it's the Republicans' fault because they refuse to vote on a bill to fix it. It is not up to President Biden. It's not his job. He is the executor of those laws. The fact that presidents keep using these executive orders, quite frankly, is a lot of BS. But, like, it is not his job to pass laws. It is not his job to fund these programs. All he can really do is set an agenda of what he'd like and then basically sign or veto things that he doesn't. It is up to Congress to protect our border. And they flat out refuse because Trump said it was going to be bad for his candidacy. And if you don't think that's true, then you are mistaken. And you can look it up. It is very knowable. It is very provable. They even took credit for it. They were proud of doing it. And if you want to watch 
some interviews with the guy that wrote that bill, he'll tell you everything you need to know. So that's what I'm worried about. I don't, I don't know who's going to be running things, and I think we all know under the Trump presidency, he put in three super conservative Supreme Court justices that have changed the inc- entire legal landscape of the country. So that is how dangerous that kind of stuff is, and there's no reason to think he wouldn't do it again if somebody else, you know, had to leave, had to leave the bench. So that's the thing. So uh, yes, I think the president is pretty much always a figurehead. He might be more of a spokesman. He might be like George Clooney is for Nespresso. But he is responsible for putting the people in that actually do the work and the job of this country. And that is much more important to me because that is the stuff that trickles down to us. You know, like I think Trump will get in. I think he'll force Jerome Powell either out or to lower interest rates, thereby speeding up the economy because that's good for businesses. But it's horrible for people like us because that will cause a recession. A recession, by the way, that all the Republicans predicted would be here and isn't. We have inflation, but it is still going down and we are not in a recession. Yep. Nobody can afford anything, and that's called price gouging and corporate mismanagement, but that's another show. So um, I think I've talked enough. I'm sorry I was late. I do not want to do another 37-minute uh, top 20 like I did last week. By the way, I didn't even post any clips from that show yet. It was just so long and so massive, I didn't even get a chance to go through it. I might do that, so if you're following us on TikTok or YouTube Reels or YouTube Shorts or Instagram Reels, I might get those out this week. Probably not, but maybe. So I appreciate anybody that follows us, comments, likes it, shares it, whatever. I, I did stop reading some of the comments again uh, that what we were getting because I just keep seeing the notifications come in, and I'm like, yeah, it's just really not something I need to deal with right now. I'm going to try and get through my stomach issues and my overall anxiety issues and my overarching depression issues and play you guys some good local music for a little while if you're interested in such a thing. I'm going to start it with this one. Uh, for me, it was one of the most quintessential uh, Rebel 9 songs of the Razorblade Diaries. It never, in my opinion, got its due, but that's okay. I'm just the songwriter, and I had a story to tell. doesn't mean everybody's going to like it, but that's cool. I'm cool, but that, it's fine. <laughs> 